Howdy folks, it's Atal Turtle here. Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And today we're going to do a full VFR flight in the DAR TBN 930 with ATC. Parking spot to parking spot. My full checklist, everything. We're going to do it all. And um, I was really just going to start in the aircraft, but I'm like, you know, why don't we do the flight planning together for these IFR flights rather than just going? That way you can see how this is done. I did do a video on how to use this flight planning screen never leave the sim never get an add-on never spend any money you can do it all from here look for that video for detail lines. we're just going to do something simple in this case it is going to be the flight that i use as my example because i'm like hey that's a cool flight so we're actually going to go back and do it now so i chose my plane already flight conditions um i just chose clouds because in real life right now it is completely stormy and not flyable so we're going to start off here at simon boulevard let's do a parking spot these are all fuel here all of those are fuel i already tested this because i had some issues with um my yoke not being calibrated so yeah this is like my 15th take at this but you don't need to know those details so let's start departure here in that parking spot and let's go all the way to princess juliana um we haven't landed here yet in this sim so this will be fun and that's our arrival. Now we could leave it like that, but we're not going to. We're going to go low altitude, low, low altitude IFR, and let's do 19,000. We can well, fight like this. We can probably go higher. Let's just do 19,000. Alrighty, but we don't want to be like, you know, making weird angles and turns. So let's do what was I wanted to do? Was it Vagal 109? Yeah, we'll do Vagal 109. And um, it's going to bring us here, hour and 56 minutes or so. Um, our approach is automatic. We're going to use the classic VOR approach onto runway 10. So um, here, because there's no wind, you know, let's change our wind so this is an appropriate landing. Because right now we'd have a tailwind. Um, but we're going to do the VOR approach, which is you just go towards the VOR. And then as soon as you see the runway, you break free and you land. But let's change the wind. Um, again, real world weather is totally crazy. Um, what time zone is that? Because it is like nighttime for me. It's the right day, but it's nighttime. Whatever. <laughs> it's so weird how that works. Alrighty, let's see here. Clouds. I don't think we need to worry about the cloud layers. Um, yeah, this one we do because um, you have to be able to see when we're landing. So let's put it like that. Let's not. Well, wind layer. Let's not add the wind layer. Whoops. Let's click on the wind layer that's already there. And let's make it, oh, I don't know. If we do 100 degrees, that's exactly into the wind. That's no fun. Let's make it a slight crosswind from the left. Let's do 87 degrees. And let's make it a 7, not wind. Gusts? Um, gusts are going to come from there. And frequency... Every 35 seconds. Okay, there we go. So we did custom weather and custom wind. Normally we don't need to go into that detail, but I just wanted to because why not? Normally I would do that stuff ahead of time. That's not going to update though, is it? Is that going to update if I select a new parking spot? Yeah, there it is. 87, 86 degrees at 7 knots. Why is that? Now it updated. Awesome. So there we go. There's a flight plan. Very, very simple, but very, very realistic and very complete. So let's hop into the sim now and let's fly this thing. All right, so let's just start with a look outside. Normally we start the flights here, right? But for the IFR thing, I want to show you the planning as well because it's very interesting. So here we are, quick cruise around on the drone. Gorgeous, gorgeous scenery. Holy cow. I love how cities and communities go up the mountain. Hey, it looks like we got a downtown area over there. The clouds are okay when you make it manual. Of course, the clouds and weather looks best when you let real-world weather kick in, because then there's like 18, is it 18 levels, something like that, of data. Maybe it's even more than that. Multiple levels of data that's used, where you don't have control like that when you do it manually. So it never looks as good manually. We can't choose the visibility distance. We can't choose anything. So it looks kind of crappy, but it looks better than the paid stuff did for X-Plane, so I'm not complaining. I just wish we could fly real world right now, but we'd be stormed in, so we can't. So anyway, a quick look around, I guess, by doing the flight planning, it kind of sacrifices the looking around because we already did our intro. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out this new format with the IFR stuff because there's more options now. So just bear with me. 
We'll settle in into a groove soon. Right now, though, let's hop inside and let's get our passengers loaded. And let's see what we're going to do here. First of all, I don't... Well, if you looked at the white ring, we have plenty of fuel to... Well, on the flight planning screen, there's a white ring for our range based on fuel. Plenty of fuel, it says, but let's bump it up because it's me flying. This is always going to take longer. So let's get our folks in here. There's me and my co -worker. Whoa! My co-worker, my co-pilot friend. And let's see. It's going to be all adults today, I think. I think it's going to be a day trip to um, the beach on St. Martin. Why we can afford a charter for a day trip, but we can't afford um, a hotel there is beyond me, but we'll just go with it. We got some water bottles and some swimsuits and some towels, and there we go. We're ready to go there. All right, next on the checklist, make sure parking brake is set, which it actually already is in this aircraft. I know from experience. Here we go. Let's get this thing going. Crash lever up and source to battery and generator to main and panel lights and come on so we can see what we're doing. Cabin and access will come on, come down here. Actually, it's over here. Start the MDF. There you go. See parking brake and everything is already set. Good. Just check the de-ice lights. And check the gear down light. I'm clicking on a screw. It's supposed to be the light. There we go. Uh, check the fuel quantity. We just did that together. Let's get up here and let's get this thing started. We'll get the strobe on. And make sure my yoke conditioners are full. I don't see anything there that does it, but I just hear them. Fuel selector is already on when you start this aircraft. We can check it anyway. Come up here, ignition to auto, it automatically is. Auxiliary boost pump, we got to turn that on though. And then we got to do the starter. And give that a second to sure turn itself off in a moment. And come down here, and we're going to watch this eventually shoot up. And then we're ready to do the next step. All right, everything's looking good. There we go. Very, very nice. Just a little behind of this behind the scenes secret here. Um, I've been at this for three hours trying to get this to work because I found out I bumped something on my yoke. There's like the secret switch and it screwed up everything. And after troubleshooting, I realized it was my yoke and not something weird. And I just defaulted everything. Just defaulted my yoke, not the same. I outside of the sim just defaulted everything and now it works so there we go i'm very excited but it's also much later at night all right where are we um feather throttle twice i don't know why but it just says to do that all right boost pump to auto now fuel select confirm auto it is do a shift select test so right now it is on the left tank if you come up here and you hit shift it should shift to the right tank and it's supposed to do that automatically that's what the fuel select auto means alrighty AP trims which I have a typo in my checklist is ATP should be AP trim confirm generator main and it is bleed to auto oh, come down bleed to auto where are you I know you're down here somewhere there you are bleed to auto AC and fan temperature there we go whoa um, let's keep it on defrost. Where's my AC? And f I have a thing here that says you can control air conditioning and the fan speed. Where is that? Um, there's music. Um, parking brake. I don't know. I should just take that off my checklist because I don't know. Oh, there it was. I saw it. It's over here. We can make it a little bit warmer on this cold morning. It's like 8.45 in the sim. And turn the fan on. Nice. All right, let's get our yolks back in there. There we go. All right, oxygen on above the starters. Oxygen on. De-ice and pedo heat as needed. I panic, so I just turn it on now. Just because. And then um, we will do the nurse separator. All right, actually, not how we get going. Um, PDF stuff. Let's see. We've got, can't really mess with stuff, can we? Um, other settings, there's wind. I like using wind number three. Um, it's gonna just stay there because I did manual winds. In fact, that's not even right. You saw me make it like 84 degrees, right? Whatever, if we have a tailwind when we get there, we have a tailwind when we get there. Um, I don't think I can turn that off, but it can have a range. So that's kind of nice, I guess. So you can see where you're going. Um, 
what else can we do? We need to set that to FMS. And that's kind of it. It's kind of a tease. You can click here, but no, you can't. All right, we'll leave it like that for now. Um, that should be good enough. Can we even get a timer on here? I don't see anything about the timers either. Timers? No. What a tease. It shows a timer. I have a note written down that this is my favorite aircraft of them all. Oh, timer's over here, I bet. Um, that this is my favorite aircraft of them all. But um, we'll see now that I've flown other aircraft. It's just this was the first one I flew, I think. All right, there we go. Bathroom, I'm about to use this thing. All righty, wind on, flight plan, radios. Flight plan is really simple. Um, we have to go like this, I think. Yeah. You saw the flight plan on the flight plan screen. We're going to use that departure and fly for like an hour and a half or two hours, whatever it's at, and then land. Use ATC and autopilot the whole way. This is a regular IFR flight, right? We'll zoom in here so you can see where we're going. Pretty straightforward. Let's tune in for IFR clearance now. Tune clearance and request clearance, and let's see what it says. Clearance delivery turtle, so Tango Sierra 4105 IFR to Juliana, ready to copy. Turtle Soup Tango Sierra 4105 is cleared to Juliana Airport as filed. Take off runway 9 or climb and maintain 13,000 feet. Departure frequency is 124 decimal 0 squawk 2636. All right, we're going to read it back. It says climb runway Turtle take up 9. We know that. Sierra maintain 13,000 feet. So let's go Airport here and let's get this set up. Now, I don't take know yet if I can set this feet. now and it'll stay or Departure if I have to redo in the air. What I like to do when it works. But I like to get it all set up. Did I say 13,000? 13,000. 13,000. So we'll do that. We'll do vertical speed about 1,400 feet per minute. And we'll use nav. So now my thought is I just need to do yaw damper. There's flight director and autopilot. So just two buttons. Yaw damper, autopilot. Once we're in the air. That's how I like it to work. Is it going to work that way? I don't know. We might have to redo all this once we're in the air. But hopefully it'll do nav, climb at 1,400 feet per minute to 13,000 feet all on its own. Right off the end of the runway soon as they pilot. We will see. Maybe we'll hand fly. I don't know. We'll see how I feel when we get there. Alrighty. So what is next? Nav source to FMS. We did that. All bugs on. We did that. ATIS we don't need to worry about because... Um, we're using no weather. It told us some stuff anyway, didn't it? No, it didn't. It didn't tell us wind or anything. Um, I should probably tune ATIS. I should probably update my checklist to put ATIS before IFR clearance. I have that backwards. I got to update that and fix my typo. Huh. I got a lot of stuff to fix on this one. Again, this is one of the first ones I created, checklist and flight. So anyway, here we go. Let's tune ground. And let's get taxi IFR clearance. We can get Vacation going here. Ground, turtle, so Tango, Sierra, 4105 with Kilo ready to taxi IFR. In the meantime, we'll come down here. We'll turn this turtle, on. Tango, Sierra, taxi to and we'll turn taxi lights on and open. the pulse light on. Contact tower on the flaps down and props forward. Uh, runway, runway 9, nine via taxiway alpha. Oh, and then we do it in the tower, of course. Pretty standard stuff. Where's my taxi ribbon? How come my taxi ribbon isn't working? Um, okay. Did I miss something? Normally the taxi ribbon works at every airport. Why is it not working now? I don't know. And when I did one of my tests... Hello. When I did one of my tests, before I knew my stuff was all screwed up, the taxi ribbon worked with this aircraft, with this airport. So, there it is. It was behind us. Where when I did my test, it was off to the side. Okay. Worried about nothing. Let's get going. Um, let's get the taxi. Because we already looked around and it's just a straight shot. So I'll see you when we get there. As we taxi though, I just have to say I just do not like how cartoonish some of these aircraft look. It's a huge bummer too because... All the other scenery and immersion is just gorgeous. Well, aside from the stupid taxi ribbon. Everything else is gorgeous, but the airplanes are just kind of cartoonish. I don't understand 
why that is, but I don't know. Maybe they'll get better as things update, and maybe they'll fix this nasty, ugly taxi ribbon. I know there's a mod for it, but I'm running mod-free, add-on-free, because even the simplest mods are really screwing up these aircraft, or screwing up the sim, so not going to touch it. Just going to use it and stop complaining about it, and I'll see you in just a moment here. Something I wanted to point out is how the camera moves. So watch, when I start to move the plane to the right, notice how the camera is delayed. See that? And that's on purpose. I was watching this video game show called High Score on Netflix, which I totally recommend you watch. It's about the evolution of video games. And in the last episode, they talked about that with 3D when they started getting into 3D games, is the camera has to be slightly delayed from the actual movement of the object so that it looks like it's moving. So as I move the rudders back and forth and the plane moves, see how the camera is delayed ever so slightly? If it didn't do that, you wouldn't have the sense of movement and you wouldn't be able to figure out what you're doing. Isn't that awesome? And I was explaining to my wife that even in the flight simulator does it, then I realized everything does it because you have to. <laughs> that was one of the big discoveries. So anyway, here we are, runway 9, let's stop. Ooh. Now we're going to stop. There we go. Set the parking brake and tune in. Tower. There we go. And request takeoff clearance. Here we go. Let's get this Thank thing in the air. Tango Sierra 4105 at runway 9 are ready for takeoff IFR to Juliana. Turtle Hook Tango Sierra 4105 cleared for takeoff runway 9 -er. Cleared for takeoff. Here we go. So first, since we have a copilot, we have to come up here. We have to do the dimmer switch so that the lights in back are off or dim so people can see. If we crash, landing lights are now on. Nav lights are on. Confirm the flaps, and they are. Set the timer, which is right here. And start. And it goes up there, too. Nice. Sometimes it goes up in both places. Sometimes it doesn't. But let's get that up so I can adjust my map because we're going to get out of here pretty soon. There we go. Okie dokie. If everything goes as planned, autopilot should stay set. So all I need to do is just do yaw damper and autopilot when we get in there as soon as I feel like it. All right. I'm nervous. I want to see if it works because sometimes it doesn't. Talk about that autopilot thing. All right. Let's get out here. And we're just going to do a rolling start. There we go. If you put the lines between your legs, then you are actually centered. So even it looks like you're to the right, you're actually centered, see? Crazy, isn't it? But that's how it works, because probably because you're so high up. All right, and there we go. I can't see my speed bugs with my old eyes, but we're going to rotate now. If, yeah, that's about on time. All right, um, gear coming up. Flaps coming up. Bring back throttles a little bit. Keep everything in the green. And if this goes as planned, we should do yaw damper and autopilot. And it kept everything. We're hands free before we're even over the end of the runway. Nice. All right. So it is backing windy. Yeah, I think so. Let's just double check. I'm gonna climb at 1350, 1400, up to 13,000. I should look up what the optimum climb rate is, so we can adjust accordingly. And now we gotta make some transmissions here because we're IFR. And then we'll look around. And let's tune in the center and tell them where we are and what we're doing. Turtle Soup Tango Sierra 4105, Maisha Center, continue as planned. Altimeter 290, decimal 92. Alrighty, there we go. So, alright, what I was saying is we should really know what the optimum climb rate is. Since we don't have IES hold, either the climb rate based on speed or feet per minute, and then we can adjust this accordingly, right? Either choose it there or choose IES depending what it's supposed to be. Alrighty, looks like we're going to climb to 13,000. If it doesn't capture it, I'll hit VNAV. There's no VNAV on this. Yes, there's over here. We'll hit VNAV. I don't think it works, though. 
But if we have to, we will. Some aircraft actually have to hit VNAV to capture. You're not supposed to. It's just broken. So I just fly this like you're doing a GA autopilot. And it seems to be working most of the time. Alrighty, we got everything set. Autopilot's going to do the work. So we just sit here for two hours pretty much. I'll keep an eye on my systems, make sure everything is in the green. And that is it. Super simple. Let's see here. Um, we can turn the dimmer switch off now so people can see what they're doing if they want to. And we'll keep the icing on and off as we need to. We can turn the inertia separator off right now. And there we go. Landing lights off at 10,000, which we'll get to soon. So let's look around a moment. And then we'll be set for sightseeing, but we'll look around together. Hang on a second. Oh, we're in the red on the on the throttles. Let's back up. Already in the clouds. We just got started. In fact, I waited too long to show you stuff because although we can see some mountains, but um, we're already in the clouds, which is super, super cool. Look at the cities or communities down there. Oh my gosh, how awesome. So anyway, let's hop back inside and make sure everything is okay here. Yep, there we are. We're just roaming around, going along the water. And then, whoop, wrong way. There we go. And then pretty soon we'll be turning away from the land, the mainland. What am I doing? Wrong one. The mainland, and then we'll be heading north to the princess. So there you go. Simple enough. Super easy. I even made it way more complicated than I need to, like usual. But hopefully you enjoy it, and I'll see ya in a couple hours.
Alright, so we have reached zero, top of descent, and um, I don't know what happened, but it immediately told me to acknowledge, even though I just finished saying it. But anyway, descent and maintain 7,000 feet, so we'll take this down to 7. And I really wanted it to include even more sightseeing with all those clouds. It was a non-stop cloud party for like two hours or whatever, but um, come here. Come on, there we go. Vertical speed down, nothing's what I was saying. Alright, so it was like a cloud party for like two hours. Look at this. The problem is, then it would have had like, you know, a two hour video of clouds. So I had to cut a lot of it out, even though it was just amazing for the longest time. So, let's see here. I want to get ADIS of our destination, but we can't because then we'll be losing this. I guess what we could do is put. I am expediting it. What do you want me to do? Nosedive here? <laughs> We're going as fast as we can. It's fine. Okay. So, I guess in COM 2 we could put the ADIS switch over. Landing gear. I know because we're coming down. Does this have speed brakes? I don't think so. No, I don't see anything with speed brakes. Oh. But anyway, we could put ADIS in COM 2, but then we will lose the communication on COM 1, and then we get mad at us for not acknowledging things. So we're not going to worry about ADIS on the other radio, stuff like that, but you probably would do that in real life. We're not going to worry about it right now. So we're coming down, we've got... We're going to keep seeing landing gears in there. There. Okay, just enough throttle. So we're coming down. As long as we get down soon enough, this should be pretty straightforward and easy. We'll let the autopilot take us in pretty much to the minimums and we'll land by hand. That's the plan anyway. If it's going to work that way or not, it's another story. So let's see, what do we need to do here for approach? We need the weather, which we kind of have because I set it up. Barometer, we'll just well, don't need that either because there's no weather turned on. So... We don't have access to an ADIS unless it's COM2, we're not going to worry about that. Landing lights on at 10k, let's do landing lights right now. And we'll do the dimmer in a moment. And then inertia separator on, gears and flaps in a moment. Alrighty, so let's see, nothing else to do except watch my system so we don't overspeed or anything. In fact, we don't even want to, no, we want to make sure we stay slower so we have enough room. At least that's it. A um, couple more cloud views for you, and then we're going to land this plane. So I'm just playing with this here. I went over to COM2 just to see if we could get into an airport in an ATIS. But we can't because it's the same options as here and we would actually end up canceling stuff to get out. So you'd probably have to already know the ATIS, which would be stepping outside of the sim. So we're not going to do that. Um, we're just going to continue down to 7,000 feet. Do you think we'll make it? I think we might actually make it without having to circle around. That would be good. Alrighty, here we go. So I want to look up Delta 189 or 4 in real life and see where that flight's coming from, because that is awesome. I love the real life traffic stuff. It's so cool. Um, our timer says 3 hours and 4 minutes. That's because I had to step away for a little bit. And the timer kept running, apparently, even though I had the game paused. Or the sim paused, whatever you want to call it. So I don't know why it doesn't pause the timer, but it didn't. So we are not... We have not been flying for 3 hours and 4 minutes. But oh well. Doesn't really matter. There's been enough time that hasn't been counted, so I guess we break even anyway. Alright. Um, hoping we come down fast enough. Alright, with our rapid descent, we're almost at 7,000 already. Probably sooner than anticipated, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna give us some throttle here so we can get our speed back up. I'm not worried about 
going too fast or anything. Otherwise, we will dim the lights in a moment. Inertia separator gear and flaps will all happen at the same time. As soon as we get cleaners here in a moment. It's interesting how the last few moments of like an approach and landing seem they feel way longer than the whole flight leading up to it. I don't know why. Probably because during cruise I can do other things, but when we're about to land, I have to stay focused, super focused, and just hurry up and wait. A lot of hurry up and wait, I think. We've reached our 7,000, so we'll get some throttle in and keep our speed up until probably Luba. That's probably when we'll bring our speed down. So we've got two minutes until we make our turn, and then we should see the runway in front of us way off in the distance, below the clouds. Hopefully we can see it through the clouds. Oh, here we go. Contact approach. We're probably going to make this climb to 19,000 because they do funny stuff like that. And tune in the approach. And here we go. Juliana approach Turtle Soak Tango Sierra 4105 7000 feet. Turtle Soak Tango Sierra 4105 Okay. We got the altimeter. There we go. That's what I was waiting for. 2600. Acknowledge. 2600 feet. Vertical speed, nose that thing down. Bring back throttles. Not tall as landing gear though. And that way we'll go as slow as we possibly can. Again, there are no spoilers that I've noticed. At least pushing my spoiler button doesn't do anything. And we're about ready to make our turn on the final. I see the island over there. And I see the runway. Or no, that's an aircraft. That's not the runway. Runway's over here. Alrighty, here we go. Get slower. Let's get our dimmer on now. If we don't forget, let's get our inertia separator on now as we come through the clouds. That's to block out any ice that might come through. And then we'll get gear and flaps down in a moment here. Probably as soon as we turn on to final. Like I said, a long final. And then if we're not low enough, then we'll just nosedive it. Hopefully ATC didn't screw us up. No, oh, there's an aircraft in front of us. That's awesome. Alright, cool. I really want to look around, but a lot's going to happen very quickly here, so we can't look around. We just have to fly a plane and land. Darn IFR flying. <laughs> Alright, some final outside views, just because we have a little bit to go yet. There's aircraft in front of us that we're following. And there's another island like St. Bart's. And there's the sun coming up still, kind of. And let's get out of the way here and have a look. Alright, drone away. I'm done with the views. Time to fly a plane. Oh, I'm going right through the clouds. How fun is this? Right through the clouds. And then when we pop up, we should see a runway right in front of us. Then we'll break out of pilot, scoot over, and land. That's the plan. Anyway. Turtle Soup Tango Sierra 4105. You are one tree miles west. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect VORDME. Mm -hmm. Yep. Clear to that Juliet Mike. That's exactly how we wanted it to be. And let's acknowledge that. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect VORDME Zulu runway 10 approach via Papa Juliet Mike transition. Cleared to Papa Juliet Mike Turtle Slope Tango Sierra 4105. And because we're not in a jet, we don't have to. Oh my, look at that. <laughs> we're in that cloud. We don't have to, um, um, you know, skim the beach with our wheels and knock over the fence or anything. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the airport landing videos at this airport in real life. You'll know exactly what I mean once you see it. So the VOR is over here, and the runway is over there. So we're actually heading towards the VOR. And what's going to happen is we're going to scoot over and land. And I know that because I've flown this slant alpha many times. Um... Many, many times, an X plane with all the different jets and small planes. So there's 2600. I feel like we need to come down a little bit. Um, will this tell us? Sometimes this will tell us. 
the next. Well, that doesn't tell us anything. Oh dear. Sometimes that will tell us. What? Yeah, how come it's not telling us to come down? Well, let's go down on our own here. A thousand feet. Um, what I was looking for in the computer was the procedures of... See, there's a port right there. The runway. So let's break free of autopilot, actually. Let's break all this. And, um... Whoa, come down. Gear. gear down. So what I was looking for was sometimes in the computer you'll see your altitudes laid out for you. And I was just looking for the next altitude because see how we got four white on the path here were way too high. So we kind of have to finish this ourselves, I guess, which is fine. And um, we're going to flop down in a minute. I'm just keep an ear open for ATC. We're going to come on in. How does that cloud look? Below the clouds now, I can see over St. Bart's. Well, um, yeah, cause, no, 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 we're two and two on the pappy. In fact, now we're three and one, so if I climb, we're going to be way too high to land. So we're just going to do this. There's two and two, so we're going to stay just like this at 500 feet per minute. Um, so ATC is kind of broken. Sometimes they'll not worry about you and you can still do what you need to do. Other times, you will, um, get yelled at. And then they will cancel you. So whatever. Yeah, we're two and two. We're not coming. We're not going back up to 2,600 feet. Nope. In fact, we're still to the left a little bit. There's just a little bit of wind, just like I um, programmed it to be. And this looks amazing. All right. Let's slow down so we can get first set of flaps down here in a second. Come on. You want first set of flaps? There we go. Are they still mad at us? Um, no. No, 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 no. See, we're still too high anyway. Acknowledge. Okay, I'll acknowledge it. So they're not going to clear us to land. So we're still too high. Second set of flaps. One or two in this one. Two in this one. And we're going to float now. Whoa, whoa, was it ready for it? I should know better than that. Alrighty. Throttles to make up for the extra drag. And here we go. We do have reversers. Oh my gosh, we're still getting blown to the right, as we should be. And they're not even clear us to land, are they? Whatever. Whatever. Come on. Still too high. Let's skim the beach. All those people. Ducking for cover. And here we go. Let's aim for the beach instead of the numbers and clip some heads, clip some cars, hit the fence. You're ready with reversers. Ground effects are right there. And smooth as silk. Reversers, nose wheel down gently. And brakes. Um, do we have an airport aircraft landing towards us? No. What? Weird. Yeah, they're coming at us. Okay. Look out. Look out. Uh-huh. That's hilarious. Alright, let's stop here. We almost got a head-on collision. <laughs> stop here. Set the parking brake a second. And let's do a taxi to parking. Juliana Ground, Turtle let's see what they tell us Sierra. to do. Taxi we're doing that, we'll get our lights correct here. Using taxiway, very specific. Alright, let's stop the timer, even though um, it um, is off, right? Lights, 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 dimmer switch, oxygen switch and come off, and flaps confirm. Up, we're using all the other switches. All right, let's taxi. So let's use our taxi view and take off the parking brake and head this way. Come on, I think that's where it's pointing. Yeah. And um, I double checked, and it did say land runway ten.
but it wanted us to like circle around maybe don't quite understand that but we did it our way <laughs> anyway all right let's taxi this over here Ooh, do I hear another turbo prop coming at us or something? No. Turtle sub Tango Sierra 4105. Hold position caution, other traffic. Yeah. Turtle sub Tango Sierra 4105. Continue taxi. <laughs> I was wondering about that fuel truck. Acknowledge continue taxi. Roger, turtle sub okay. Tango Sierra. Roger, roger. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Where's our person? There they are. Oh, bonk. Touching on the brakes. Or what is that? Good Brakes 2. Name that movie. Good Brakes 2. Parking brake is set. There we go. Alright, we'll shut down everything we can, but then eventually the sim will end our flight and that's the end of it. So here we go. Parking brake is set. Strobe lights off. Fuel selection to manual. AP trims. Whoop. Oh, come on. Off. There we go. Bleed off. That was over here. Conditioners cut off on yoke, and that's when everything is going to turn off. So let's do this other stuff first. Um, what else can I do here? Let's come back up here and do this out of order, or Jeremy else we're going to need all that. Um, Alrighty, let's see. Okay, let's turn that off. Is that going to underflight? Nope, it'll underflight as soon as we hit this crash bar. There we go. I kind of did all those buttons out of order just because I wanted um, to be able to get through them. So we're going to end it like this because if we keep going, if I continue, it erases all of our time. So, well, here we go. The pause counted it right, hour 52, but the timer on the plane kept going. So hour 52 is the actual wheels off the ground time. All right, so take off to landing. Otherwise, we're going to leave it here because if we hit continue, it erases all that. So that's it. Hopefully you liked it. I certainly did. Leave a flight to flight option, a flight idea, in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and all that jazz, and I'll catch you next time.